Oops. Thank you very much, Antonio. We have discovered that you are not a neuroskeptic, you are a psychopharmacoeconomist. <laughs> you want to give alcohol and glucose and everything to everybody. That's very good. So, our third speaker today is uh, Rosemary Nagel, and uh, she is a CREA research professor and research director of the Laboratory of Economia Experimental at the University of Pompeu Fabra since 2007, I think. So she studied economies, economics uh, in Bonn, and uh, I think you were, uh, your supervisor was a Nobel Prize, was that, is that yes. right? She was surrounded by Nobel Prizes in all her career, also in her postdoc. And um, she was in Pittsburgh with Al Roth, and after that she joined the Faculty of Business and Economics in the University Pompeu Fabra. Uh, she brought in her little CV that she was the first in doing, as I said in the beginning, a um, uh, PhD in experimental One economics. Of <laughs> One of the first. Okay. And uh, probably because this is something that was not uh, uh, possible to think of <laughs> in that moment and maybe difficult to think now. No? So, uh, she's uh, famous, basically, for, as she said, for her work on the beauty contest game experiment, which she will also present today, looking at behavior and into the brain. And, um, in fact, I, I liked your talk, no? because uh, thinking about what others are thinking is something that all of us would like to do. <laughs> would like to, to correctly guess, at least. And um, she said that she will bring together social cognition and neuroeconomics. So thank you very much for being with us, and the floor is yours. OK, thank you very much for the introduction. So Antonio said you should eat before you go um, to uh, make judgments. I will tell you that you sh should think what others are thinking and sh you should learn about this before you actually go into a negotiation. Yeah? And that's what hopefully economists teach uh, in uh, the studies of economics. Okay, so um, I will start with a critical view on um, training and it's basically training in economics and business. So there are 60% um, of employers say applicants lack critical communication and interpersonal skills. And some others say, well, they also, applicants nowadays, can't think critically and creatively and solve problems or write well. I mean, they say that today, they said it also in our times, and I think also in Aristotle's times they said that. And um, maybe we have now the final solution, how to make people um, learn communication and interpersonal skills and also how to solve problems. And I will introduce this, these two very broad areas to you with playing a game with you, discussing the game from all kinds of sides, like theoretically, what is math telling us, what is, what is your behavior telling us, what is the difference between the math and your behavior, how does the brain look like when you think about these problems, yeah, and how everything works together. Yeah? So basically through this game, I can show you that maybe we can um, see where are the problems of learning, teaching, and maybe at the end we will agree that what we do in economics nowadays uh, might help us to go become better in communi communication, interpersonal skills, and also in problem solving. Okay, let's play a game. And you all got, at the beginning, a piece of paper and a pencil, empty pencil, in my case. And I give you here the rules of the game. So the rules are, these are the most simplest rules you can think of. You have to choose a number, and the number should be between 0 and 100. Yeah? And it uh, can be any number. Yeah? I mean, a number with, um, let's say, two, digit, two digits at most. Yeah? Um, 
uh, I mean, like after the comma. So the average of all your numbers is calculated. And we have here a person who will collect all your numbers. He will calculate the average. And the, your task is that your number is closest to 2 thirds times the average of all chosen numbers. Yeah? And the, the winner who has his number closest to 2 thirds of the average receives 10 real euros. Yeah? <laughs> And we will split the 10 euros um, to, uh, to all the possible winners, yeah, if there are multiple winners. Yeah? So all you have to do, you have to choose a number. Um, and we will collect them quickly. And then we, uh, we, uh, uh, Antonio will calculate 2 thirds times the, the average, and then 2 thirds times the average. <laughs> yeah, Excel. I mean, we do it nowadays with Excel. <clears throat> and while I'm talking, uh, he will do that, and at some point we will know the winner and we will pay the winner. Yeah? And um, so now for one minute, let's say no more than one minute, think about your number, write it down, write down also a fictitious name as before. <clears throat> yeah, eat before you think. Uh, don't drink alcohol. <clears throat> we haven't done this experiment yet. Um, and then we col quickly collect, and uh, you, you, while you, we collect, you should listen to me, and I will go on and speaking. Yeah? Is, is that clear now? Yes. Yeah? OK, one minute. Yeah. Average is like mean. Promedio, promedio. You see, calculamos el promedio. Yeah, cada uno elige un nomás. Entre cero es cien. Yeah? OK, and now no talking, please. So 40 seconds. Yeah, and we have. People, people should write their names or something. Yeah. Something that can identify. You please pass the things towards one side and then I'll go back to the bathroom. Yeah, it's fine. If it's anonymous, it's fine. No problem. We will uh, identify. Okay. Um, do we have everybody? I mean, everybody gave their number. Okay. So I continue here in the front. We have some little talking. Don't talk too much. And so we continue. So you had to think about a number. But choosing your number, of course, you have to think what the others are doing. Yeah? And that's very important when we, do, when we uh, have economic decision making, where whatever we do is, and what we get is influenced by what everybody else is doing. Yeah? So the most famous examples are, of course, the stock market. Yeah? In the stock market, when prices go up, yeah? for example, yeah? um, house prices yeah, go up. I mean, we could think of some funds which are based on house uh, markets. Yeah? And we see it's going up and going up. At some point, we will be nervous and think we should stop and sell. Yeah? But of course, we should sell before it's going down. Yeah? So if everybody sells at the same time, it goes down very quickly at the same time. So you want to sell before everybody is selling. And the same when you, when you buy a stock, yeah, you want to buy before it's going up. Yeah? So you have to anticipate what the others are doing. And that's the game you're just playing mimics this kind of behavior. Yeah? And in many other situations, we have to think what the others are thinking and, and doing. Yeah? So let's see what people have done in such a game. And we have here 7,000 newspaper readers. We offered this game to Expansion and um, 
Spektrum der Wissenschaft in Financial Times. And we had in total 7,000 uh, responders. And the winning number was 14.67. And the average was about 22. Yeah? So the person with the number 14, uh, around 14, was the winner. Yeah? So, I mean, what do people think? What did they do? Is there anything systematic? I mean, many of you probably thought, well, I, I don't know what the others are thinking. Maybe you didn't even realize that you have to think what the others are uh, doing. Yeah? And we have a lot of people who, I mean, basically every number here, these are choices from 0 to 100, every number is basically represented. Here we have relative frequencies of all these 7,000 people. Yeah? So basically, well, maybe there is no structure, but you all see that there is quite a nice structure. Yeah? There is a big spike here, and a big spike here, and a big spike there. And ah, there is also a spike here. So anybody has an idea what these spikes could be? Any idea? By the way, who knows this game? Huh? Okay, it's, I mean, you didn't read Expansion, you didn't read my papers, <laughs> so it's still not very known, yeah? <laughs> You're not economists. So I can still play this game and um, surprise people. So what could this be? Well, let me say what this is. Or oh, anybody has an idea. What could this first spike be? This really the highest spike. 33. 33, very good. Who said that and wh wh why is that 33? Because there is a first approximation of uh, two thirds of Exactly. So, if you don't play a random number, you have to guess what the others are guessing, and maybe a good intuition is to say 50 is the average, and you pick 33. Well, obviously, the next spike is 22.22, and actually, in the newspaper experiments with 7,000 people, we in fact get 33.33 and 22.22. We have the answer? Yeah. The winner must be the closest to 20. Is that two thirds of the average, or is it the? No, that's two thirds of the average. Okay, twenty-two. So we we have twenty-two. Someone that goes twenty-two is the winner. So we're going to okay. So in fact, when I played the game the first time, that was when I was a graduate student, in a class, I picked twenty-two. So basically. A, A, B, C is the winner. So there's only one winner. No, there's only one twenty-two. I thought there was two. Okay. Very good. A clap for. 22. And you see, I will also show you how this brain looks like when he, uh, this brain who has chosen 22. Yeah? I mean, I'm almost like a magician yeah, who knows how a brain looks like when you um, choose 22. So when I was an, a graduate student, I chose also 22, thinking, well, I'm the only experimenter in this cl uh, class. And I'm very clever, I'm more clever than the others. They will just choose 50 time, and times two thirds, and I will anti uh, I mean, be a little bit smarter and be one step ahead. Yeah? I mean, the winning number in our game was actually 20 or 19. Yeah? So very similar to this crowd. Yeah? I mean, here we have uh, a bigger crowd. They, choose, they have three weeks to think, or one week to think. And we, we, will, we get... Um, um, so we get much closer, so we're um, uh, much more down. So when you play that in a graduate class, yeah, with PhD students, you also get to 16 or so. When you play it with theorists, so I've played it with a room full of my colleagues, well, you get to 10 or 9. Yeah? So now I have explained you the behavior. Yeah? So that's behavior. And probably if we look at this, this will be very similar. I mean, we will have quite a few people uh, around here, quite a few people around here. We will have people who choose zero. Yeah, and Antonio can uh, say that. Yeah. So we have, I have now told you what you have, uh, what basically people like you do. That's the behavior part. But there is, of course, also a mathematical part. I told you we will also talk about math. So Akari has talked about rationality. Uh, Antonio has talked a little bit less about rationality, maybe, or he has used this word less. So, the question is, what is a rational person playing? We are now talking about math, yeah? Math. 
forget about you. Yeah? What is a rational person doing if he thinks everybody is rational in the room and everybody knows that everybody is rational? Yeah? And everybody knows also that everybody knows that everybody and so, and so on. Yeah? So I heard already one number. Zero. zero. Everybody agrees it's zero? Why is this? You don't. Yes, that's correct. Okay, I have, uh, there's another payoff uh, possibility. So, everybody who's close to the um, winning number gets 100 points. And the more you are away from this target, two thirds times the average, the less is your payoff, right? So you, you, want, you want not the split. Of course, still zero is an equilibrium also in this game we played. Yeah, but let's play the game where um, we get a different payoff, yeah? So everybody gets a payoff depending on the distance to the winning number, yeah? Would you say, what is the equilibrium then or the rational solution? It's also zero. And if you, it is even the only number which gives all of us the highest payoff. Yeah, we all get 100, yeah? If, if we get 100, if we are this closest to, um, to the winning number, yeah? So it's what we call efficient, yeah? You have maybe heard markets are efficient, yeah? So zero is the equilibrium. What is the thinking process? Well, in game theory, we start at 100, yeah? 100 is the highest number. If I take, um, if I want to be closest to the... Uh,